Hello Atmospheric Science students, Dr. Shragi here and it's another beautiful day here in southern Indiana and I decided to record a lecture in the park rather than inside. Uh, hopefully some of these geese and ducks and stuff will come swimming by during the course of this lecture. And so anyway, today's lecture is going to be about climate controls and classification. In some ways this is actually kind of a, let's say, a comprehensive kind of lecture. It kind of puts together a lot of the things that we learned over the course of the semester. Uh, it kind of wraps it all up into one package here at the 8th module. And so there's going to be three main parts to this lecture. There's going to be a short part that's just called climate background. But then a longer part that kind of puts together the different ideas that we've learned over the course of this semester that are the seven climate controls. What actually determines the climate of a region. And then finally a fairly long section that's about the Keppen climate classification system. We'll learn uh, how we describe the climate of a region. And climate is a very important process, uh, part of the, the nature of an area. Climate is statistically the average of a weather parameter over a very large period of time. Uh, this could be like the average high temperature on a given day or the average amount of precipitation that it receive at a location in a particular month. And when I say over a large period, long period of time, I mean like maybe 30 years. Typically, meteorologists describe the climate in terms of a 30 year average. 30 year average high temperature on this day. 30 year average June precipitation at a location and so on. You know, meteorologists don't usually get very excited about climate. Climate is, boy it's really loud here with these geese, um, climate is kind of boring to meteorologists. Meteorologists like to be excited about things like tornadoes and hurricanes and so on. But in many ways climate is actually more important than meteorology. I mean, you know, if an environment is hit by a tornado, relatively soon the environment will recover. Uh, the trees will grow back, etc. Climate determines what kinds of plants and animals can live in an area, and actually it determines a lot of things about what people can do in an area. It determines where people can live, what kind of foods can be grown there, what we eat, what our clothing is, what our housing is, and so much more. In many ways, climate is more important than meteorology, even if meteor meteorology things like tornadoes and thunderstorms and hail and, and hurricanes get more of the headlines. Now when we're talking about climate, there's different scales of climate. Remember in meteorology, when we were talking about the meteorology of regions, uh, we had a big features of meteorology, the macro scale features of meteorology like subtropical highs and the intertropical convergence zone. And we had smaller features like cyclones and anticyclones. And we had even smaller features like thunderstorms and tornadoes and so on. And the same is going to be true in uh, when we talk about climate. There's going to be different scales of climate. Uh, we could talk about, for example, the micro scale climate of a region. Micro scale climate of a region is about the um, the, 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 the differences between climate on the scale of a few meters. Um, you know, the, how it's cooler on one bank of the river than another. Or in the shade of these trees versus in the sun over here. How um, strawberries grow better over there, but violets grow better over there, and so on. This is micro scale climate. That's different from, say, mesoscale climate. Mesoscale climate, or mesoclimate, is the climate on an area, let's say, a few kilometers in scale. Um, why is it easier to grow grapes on these, this side of the mountains versus that side of the mountain? Why do we build a ski resort on this side of the mountain versus that side of the mountain, etc.? This is mesoclimate, a climate on the scale of like a matter of kilometers. How the climate, this location is slightly different than the climate at that location. This is different from macroclimate. Macroclimate is the climate of large scale regions, often described as at least a many tens of kilometers, but we're going to be talking about macroclimate on the area of, say, states. What is the climate of Florida? That would be an example of macroclimate. Uh, what is the climate of the Sahara Desert? Okay, well, that's actually a very large region. That's more than tens of kilometers, but you get the idea of a region. Macro scale climate or macro climate will be the climate of a large region. All of this is in contrast to global climate. Global climate means like the overall temperature of the planet and so on. Okay, that's, that's a different set of challenges that we talk about in different lectures. Now before we go on, I want to have you answer one question 
uh, just to make sure that you understand this idea of the different scales of climate. I'm going to read you a statement here. It says, I can't get tomatoes to grow close to the south wall of my house because it's just too hot there, but they do well a little farther away. This statement describes the blank around my house. You got four choices there. Mesoclimate, microclimate, macroclimate, and megaclimate. All right, answer the question, follow one of the links below this YouTube video in, in blue line, and it'll take you to a uh, little bit of feedback about your answer, and then we'll move on to the second part of the lecture.